the fake, how Russell comes in behind the linebackers who are going to bite on the fake here. That's just enough to let Russell get in deep between the linebackers and the safeties, a very deep weak safety in Vincey Glenn, and good pass protection by Melander. Good teamwork between he and Gary Zimmerman. They hand it to the fullback, Del Pino. And Henry Thomas bowls him over, number 97. There's Henry. You know, we've been talking about how hot uh, Salisbury has been. <laughs> Elway very quietly has completed 12 in a row. Oh, he's 20 of 23. That's what uh, the Vikings wanted him to do, though. He's 30, 35 times. 219 yards. Bernstein back in. Delayed blitz. The pass is complete to Shannon Sharp. Carl Lee with the tackle. Help from Fred Strickland. And that's 13 in a row. Well, he goes to Johnson on the sidelines. He goes to Russell over the middle. Now he finds Sharp again. Offensive line is doing the job all of a sudden. And uh, the Broncos are just rolling. Well, you're right, Dan. It was a very quiet 12 and 13 in a row. So much made by us of the fact that Minnesota climbed back into the ball game. Can't ever forget about number seven. And you can never forget about him in the second half the fourth quarter. Goes right, throws it away. And so the streak ends at 13. But that's an example of, of John handling the pressure uh, of the uh, pass rush and not feeling he has to force the ball into a receiver. In years past, he might have scrambled around and rifled the ball down the field to Sharp or, per, or someone else. But uh, here he realizes that, hey, this is no big deal. We'll we'll just line up again after I throw this one out of bounds. Takes a hit from Barker, but uh, does not force the interception. Second down and 10, 2.29 to go. Third quarter of play. Pass cut by Bernstein. Slips a tackle and is dropped at the nine yard line. Fred Strickland, number 53, makes the tackle. That's a gain of five, 2.15 to go, third quarter. Wade Phillips, 46 years of age. Second job as a head coach. He filled in as the interim head coach at New Orleans when his dad was relieved of duties there. His dad, Bum Phillips, of course. Very much a player's coach. Second, 35, 2020 ball game. Corner blitz coming. Carlos Jenkins, the linebacker. Elway, flag is down. Pass is caught by Arthur. No. Arthur Marshall made the grab beyond the end line. There's also a flag on the play. Would have come back anyway. And this is going to be our 19th accepted penalty of the ball game. Now the question is, as if, do the Vikings accept this penalty? As it will bring up a fourth down and a possible field goal attempt. And that's what they're going to do. They're going to refuse this penalty and, and bring out the place kicker. Holding. Number 64 offense. That penalty is declined. Result of the play, fourth down. John Melander, the left guard. And as a result of the declined penalty, it'll be Jason Elam to try and break the tie. So concede the three. Don't give Elway a chance for the seven. Absolutely. Don't ever give John Elway another down. But that was good defense. Last two plays by the uh, Vikings in the secondary, uh, covering the receivers and putting pressure on Elway. Here's Jason Elam, a third-round draft pick from Hawaii. 27-yard field goal. Tommy Maddox will hold. Blocked. It's blocked. And it's Tim Irwin again. And this one he got up in the air for too. Six foot seven, but he got his all of his right arm on this one. Ball might have been kicked a little bit low, but uh, Tim Irwin has blocked two field goals in this ball game. One field goal and one extra point, rather. There he is, number 76. It's a left hand that swats it out of the air for the big guy. 
Tim Irwin can file a legal brief on how to do it. Lasers. Satellites. Cellular data networks. What exactly have we launched here? UPS Total Track. The only tracking system that can confirm delivery of your air and designated ground packages coast to coast in seconds. The package was signed for at 9.26 this morning by Mr. The arms race may be over, but the package race is just heating up. We created a whole new automotive category. Brought the American Roadster back up to speed. And reshaped the four-door sedan. You could say we've changed all the rules. Makes you wonder what we'll think of next. The new Dodge. There is a sound you can hear on the new Riviera. It's the sound of German being spoken by those who converge on Ocean Drive. In your town, America, and the world. Bex, the number one imported German beer. Dear Midas customers, we don't want your family riding around on bad brakes. That's why we'll fix the brakes on most cars the same day you bring it in. Minnesota Vikings have had a long tradition of special teams play, blocked field goals and blocked extra points and punts. They had none this season until today. Tim Irwin with a blocked field goal and a blocked extra point. First down in a 20-20 ball game. And the carry goes over right tackle out to the 23. 128 to go, third quarter. Carl Mecklenburg makes the stop on Roger Craig. Well, you know, you're six foot seven, and the coaches see that, and he's done it for his entire career. He's going to be the middle guy that's going to rush the uh, kicks every time. I mean, they're not, you can't uh, coach tall, you know. You got a tall guy, that's where you use him. It's a game of inches. Listen, I want you to report next step in summer two inches taller. That ball is hit. I think Mike Kroll got a hand on it or on Salisbury's arm. Well, Kroll's gonna come in untouched, looking for his second sack of the year. Here he is, 51. And Salisbury does a nice job of just getting rid of that ball, but that came real close to being picked off by number 73, Simon Fletcher. Third and nine. Final minute, third quarter out of the shotgun, Salisbury. Deep left side, and Dennis Smith comes over and levels Chris Carter. And Carter knew it was coming. Yeah, he did, and he still almost made a one-handed catch. Salisbury is, is looking all the way to Carter. What that does is that brings Dennis Smith with the ball. There's the ball, there's Dennis Smith. You've got to keep those uh, safeties from reading your eyes, you've got to look to the other side of the field, at least for an instant, just so that the safety can't get a beat on where you're throwing the ball. And Chris Carter, in obvious pain, limps toward the Minnesota bench. Fourth down, Newsom is on to punt, 50 seconds to go in the third quarter. And let it be said that the Vikings had 254 yards passing at the half. They picked up only 26 in the third quarter. Milburn waits for it at the 30-yard line. It's a good one. Out of bounds, no run back. Flag is down. Face mask against Minnesota. Now you keep repeating yourself, Vern, but for good reason. <laughs> it's uh, snowing penalty flags today here in Denver. The snow stopped, but the flags are still flying well we had six uh, six inch snowfall overnight and it uh, subsided this morning has not snowed uh, throughout the game that was the second major storm that hit Colorado and I'll get the hometown pop in here right now we had 14 inches of snow in Steamboat Springs on Friday <clears throat> and Thanksgiving can't come soon enough can no. it, 
face mask. Number 24 on the kicking team. Half the distance to the goal will replay fourth down. A real critical mistake there by the Vikings. Because now you give the uh, Broncos a chance to put more pressure on Newsom. Newsom has had 14 punts blocked in his career, but only one as a Minnesota Viking. And the snowballs fly out of the south end. They heard you. Yeah, that's a good play by Tom White. You bet. That's a great call by the official Tom White. Remember the Monday night game here, 49ers? Yep. And the Broncos and Roy Girello was trying to kick a field goal and got hit with the snowball. This is a good job of officiating because the snowballs were coming at Harry Newsom as he stands in the end zone. I'm not sure though that uh, this will stop them from coming though. They might be aimed at the guy in the white hat now. Oh, that's the problem. But thus far, none. That's a good sign. Newsom's punt is a good one. Milburn at the 35. And Jake Reed missed a tackle. Flew right by Glenn Milburn. A 54-yard punt, 13 on the return. 32 seconds to go, third quarter, 2020. I don't get it. Some guy bets 228 and makes 3 million bucks. <laughs> Can you imagine what Willie Mays would be worth today? Yeah. No holiday sweepstakes. Another Heineken, right? Yeah, please. No blimp with our name on it. No racing team. None of that is what made Heineken the number one imported beer in America. Where's all that money come from? Ticket prices. Yeah, I guess. And all those beer commercials. As your engine revs higher, the oil forms a hydrodynamic wedge protecting your engine parts. But as your oil's viscosity breaks down, so can the wedge. That's why Castrol GTX has unique viscosity improvers. Castrol provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol, because if your viscosity breaks down, what's next? Castrol GTX. Now get a free officially licensed NFL team football when you buy a case of Castrol GTX. To make Dodge Intrepid more spacious, we move the wheels that normally go here, out, and back to here. Up front, the wheels that were here were moved out to here. It's a concept called cab forward that yields astonishing room for people like me. While good things like wider doors, sports car handling, and superb aerodynamics came along for the ride. Dodge Intrepid. This changes everything. 2020 ball game, 32 seconds remaining third quarter. Gary Zimmerman, the former Minnesota Viking, got into a bit of a contractual battle with the Viking front office. He was very bitter about uh, what he perceived to be ill treatment at their hands and was very happy when the train was made to send him here. First down and 10. 32 seconds to go, third quarter. Play action. Elway with time, deep right side into double coverage, and it's tipped away by Carl Lee. Nifty job of defensive work by the veteran left cornerback of the Minnesota Vikings. And it's a good uh, job of the front four getting pressure on Elway again. And Randall split the uh, double team of Melander and Zimmerman, but uh, they held him out long enough. Elway takes a hit, and the thing that's got to really worry Elway and the Broncos they haven't scored the last five times they've had the ball. Jumped out to a 20 to three lead early in the second quarter and seemed in command, but uh, have struggled since then. Second and 10. Short set this time, no way. Sliding trap by Vance Johnson, no catch. And that's Elway's worst pass of the day, and it came ex uh, the next play after he got knocked down by Randall, and that's what Denny Green said to us yesterday, that. When you knock down John Elway, he's just like every other quarterback. He's not as effective uh, the next couple of plays. And a uh, very good example of it on that time as Elway underthrew a wide open wide receiver. Dallas leads by 10. Cedric Tillman comes in now as a wide receiver for the Broncos, number 87. On third and 10, motion left side. Vance Johnson started early. There's just no excuse for this. 
you know, Vance Johnson's a nine-year vet. What he's do is if he can't hear the quarterback, and he should be able to hear, they're playing at home. Elway's got a strong voice. This lack of concentration rolled off sides. Off start. Number 82 offense. Five yards. Still third down. What's the score in penalties now, uh, Right now, seconds. the Vikings have a short lead of 11 to 9. But in yardage, the uh, Broncos have a two-yard advantage, 71 to 69. Don't tell me we don't cover the ball game. <laughs> Del Pino is in the backfield. And the stunts by the Minnesota defense. Elway rolls to his right, lets it go right side, intercepted by Carl Lee. He threw it right in the arms of number 39. The second interception of the season for Carl Lee. And no penalty flags. Sixth time Elway's been picked off. And remember, he got knocked around a couple of times through one bad pass, and now he comes back with a poor judgment throw here, trying to hit Shannon Sharp on the sideline, and he hits number 39 instead. Here is Lee down here. Watch him just drift back into uh, pass coverage and read the rollout of Elway and just stay with uh, his responsibility. Excellent uh, example of zone pass coverage by the Vikings. Into the right flat, Jordan turned up field before he had possession of the ball. Boy, and he's real lucky that ball hit the ground because Tyrone Braxton was right there looking for the rebound, and he would have scored if he caught it. Steve Jordan caught six early in the first half and has been a quiet factor for the Vikings on offense since then. Carter has, uh, Anthony Carter has four. Those were early. Chris Carter has four. And Jordan six. And Salisbury's cooled off considerably. 254 yards at the half. 26 in this quarter. Until now. Barry Ward, who doesn't catch many, makes the grab on that one. That's a big play by Salisbury, too. Looking over the entire defense, and he found his outlet receiver for a key first down. That's the end of the third quarter with our score. 20 to 20. This is CBS. I'm feeling empty. I'm feeling blue. I know it's over. And I know it's through. Man, now that's the blue. Next time you want to die a Pepsi Ray, all you got to do is ask. <laughs> <laughs> Now that's the right one, baby. <laughs> so, let's say you own a business. How can the U.S. West Direct Yellow Pages help? Because businesses don't come with customers, you gotta go get them. Ah, so that's why advertising was invented. Now, ideally, your ad should be in every home and business in the city, in a place customers look the most, in U.S. West Direct. Think of all those people looking at your ad, and four out of five of them happen to be ready to buy. Right now, money practically burning a hole in their pockets. Beautiful. It's where to sell. U.S. West Direct. Announcing the lowest lease rate ever on America's number one selling trucks. Ford F-Series pickups. 4x2s, 4x4s, regular cabs, super cabs. All equipped with rear anti-lock brakes and driver's side airbag standard. Drive home your F-Series starting at only $169 a month for just 24 months. America's number one truck starting at just $169 a month. Hurry, this offer won't last. So if you're thinking the best deal on the best trucks, think Ford first. The Son of Sam interview, only on Inside Edition Weekend. Next Sunday on the NFL Today, Greg and Terry will turn back the clock 30 years for a special look at the day they played football. Reflections from players and coaches who took the field two days after the assassination of President Kennedy. That's next Sunday on the NFL Today at 12.30 Eastern Time. On first down and 10, Barry Word sneaks to the left side and is hammered by Dennis Smith. He's playing with all the enthusiasm of a five-year vet, isn't he? Yeah, and his uh, skills have not diminished uh, at all, Vern. Where have I heard that recently? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that in talking to him, he still bristles at uh, the fact that a lot of people call the Broncos a finesse football team. Well, 
They may be small and quick, which sometimes equates to being finesse, but there's nothing finessal about number 49. Second and 11. Second play of the final quarter. John Salisbury for Anthony Carter. It'll be third and 11. Tyrone Braxton was covering on the play. That was an interesting job of Salisbury trying to look the coverage off that time. Remember earlier, uh, just in the uh, last possession, he kind of hung out Chris Carter to dry by throwing up a lollipop and letting uh, Dennis Smith come over and put a big hit on him. Carter might have talked to him on the side and said, hey, man, you got to look off those safeties a little bit. Chris Carter is back in the lineup. He goes left. Roger Craig is in the backfield. The two safeties dance up. They're coming. Salisbury reads it and throws it behind Chris Carter. It's almost picked off. Incomplete pass. Bradford had it. Couldn't hang on. Yeah, defensive guys up front, like they like to use a lot of stunts, but sometimes uh, they just don't work. <laughs> Watch this one between Drenette and, and Mecklenburg. They just ran right into each other, and I would have to uh, say that Mecklenburg was correct on the play, <laughs> being that he's an 11-year vet and Drenette's only in his second year. Well, Harry Newsom is on the punt for the fifth time. The uh, Vikings waste excellent field position. They've got a fourth down at the 41. High. And a fair catch called by Glenn Milburn just inside the 10 at the nine-yard line. 14.06 remaining in regulation time. Wade Phillips' team gets back on offense. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League. And the CBS telecast is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of CBS, the Denver Broncos, and the National Football League is prohibited. You get the feeling now that the, the fans are back into it because they know what time it is. It's fourth quarter time. Elway time. First and 10 at the 9. Elway is 27 of 30. Right side, Bernstein breaks a tackle, breaks another. And hurries out near the 20-yard line, a gain of 11 before Chris Dolman makes the stop. Bernstein now 7 for 11. That's his longest gain by 10 yards. Looks like he's going to be open all night. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're forgiven. Okay. <laughs> First down and 10. Oh, the, the pun spirit overcame me. Here's Bernstein again. At least I haven't said that Salisbury had a stake in the company. A Salisbury stake, if he had one, would be real cold. Second half, he's only one out of 10. 43 yards after having such a fantastic first half. This is Chris Dolman on the sidelines, and you wonder, uh, he's getting his left shoulder worked on, but he's also breathing pretty hard. Second and eight. 12.54 to go. Elway. Pass is caught by Bernstein, but that's just a couple of yards out near the 25-yard line. James Harris is in the lineup for Chris Dolman. And he's working against Gary Zimmerman. Zimmerman's pretty smooth, though. Good footwork and then good power. He just keeps... Uh, Young James Harris, about five yards away from the quarterback. That's called a pretty good comfort zone for John Elway. Denver, as you pointed out, Dan, is number one in the NFL on third down conversions on both sides of the football. They are averaging 48% third down conversions, but they're only two of eight. Three of eight today. 36. Too much time. Another penalty. This one you can hang right on Elway. They had a lot of time uh, at the line of scrimmage. This changes things dramatically from third and six to Play third and game. 11. Offense, five yards, to third down. Look at the Kansas City comeback. And Seattle continues to lead Cleveland. I'd be surprised if Cleveland wins three more games the rest of the year. That team has to be terribly, terribly divided. And it'll be third and 11 here. Under the 12 minute mark now, fourth quarter. Dolman back 
again. Barker gets to Elway. And remember the graphic on the number of times Elway is sacked and the effect it has on the team? That's the third sack today. And what's going to bring up is real good field position for the Minnesota Vikings. There we have that statistic. They've only won 12 games when they've been sacked three times. It was the Raiders who got to John Elway seven times in a game here earlier this season. Here's Ruins punt. Gulliford grabs it at the 50, and the Minnesota Vikings have good field position with a first down and 10 at the 40-yard line. A 40-yard punt, a 10-yard return. John Salisbury and the Vikings come back in a game that is tied at 20. It's the story of Jack, the great pumpkin king, and four cool new watches at Burger King. To get a watch for a buck ninety-nine from the everyday value menu, order each time. New lower prices on food that's delicious, and see Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. Four watches to choose from isn't that fine. Each one is different for one ninety-nine. Watches from Burger King, just one more case of everyday value. I love this place. Save right now. Buy three Goodyear tires at the regular price. Get the fourth tire free. That's right. Buy any three of these Goodyear tires at the regular price and get the fourth free. Four for three now. Hurry, sale ends soon. For this guy, any deodorant will do. But these guys need Speed Stick. Antiperspirant that gives 110%. And now Speed Stick deodorant has a powerful new formula to fight odor. Speed Stick. For movers and shakers, the number one. The only one. Did you reserve the car with Hertz? Not exactly, but it's a good deal. Are they as fast as Hertz? Not exactly, but what's the rush? We're on vacation! Yeah. Dad, are we lost? Hertz gives you computerized directions. Honey, this is not exactly Hertz, okay? Well, I hope they have the same emergency road service as Hertz. Not exactly. In Rent-A-Car, there's Hertz, and there's not exactly. Make sure you choose the right one. Are you sure this is the way to the hotel? Not exactly. <laughs> Did you hear that? This game summary is sponsored by McDonald's. Tim Irwin has blocked two kicks today. One, an extra point. One, a field goal. Salisbury has passed for just under 300 yards, and the Vikings have scored the last 17 points. Those two block kicks, Vern, a directly result in this tie ball game in 2020. Salisbury gets the snap. Rush coming from Simon Fletcher. Salisbury lets it go and throws it away. It was Fletcher, number 73, who chased Sean Salisbury over to the left side. Second time now that the Vikings, second time in the last two possessions, that they have been at the Denver 40-yard line. And it's really important for these guys to do exactly what they're doing. Have a few uh, cups of water, sit on the bench and rest. They've held the Denver without a score of the last seven possessions, but this game ain't over. It's Elway time late in the fourth quarter when they're really gonna have to play. Roger Craig goes left and gets four. How significant, Dan, for the visiting team does the altitude become in the fourth quarter here? Uh, it's deadly, Vern, especially to the bigger guys. Uh, you look at the Vikings now in their huddle. They've only been out for a couple of plays on this possession, but they're already breathing hard. And when you uh, have these cold temperatures, you can see the, the breath coming out, and you look at the Broncos, and it's a whole lot different. They're just not breathing as hard. It's 28 degrees, and it's also third and six. Salisbury, right side, big catch by Chris Carter. First down, Minnesota at the 21. They got the first down, a photographer and a cheerleader as he went out of bounds for big third down conversion. He's in the slot on the left side of the screen, just goes down and out, perfect protection. Then he turns up, gets out of bounds, and... Uh, Takes down a photographer and a cheerleader hard. That's a gain of 14 yards. We'll check on the photographer and the cheerleader. Here's Roger Craig. Moves it left side and then is uh, shoved backwards as he gets inside the 20. And we near the 10-minute mark. Remember, 
how both teams passed the ball with such uh, ease in the first half. Salisbury had 254 yards and Elway 152. And the numbers for both have diminished. Yeah, big drop off of almost 200 yards from uh, Salisbury in Minnesota. The thing he's got to be careful now is don't force the ball. Don't risk the interception. On second and seven, Salisbury looks in the end zone, fires it, has a man open, and it was much too hard. Chris Carter had gotten free of Dennis Smith. That's one thing Carter does so well is find open areas in the back of the end zone. He almost uh, treats it like a uh, in the baseball, the warning track. He'll look down at the field, he'll see where he is on the field, and then he'll wait at the last moment and try to make the catch. Tremendous weapon, Chris Carter, when you get down inside the red area. 37. Anthony Carter goes left. Kadri Ismail is in the lineup. He comes to the right. Salisbury looks left the whole way. And the pass is incomplete. Ronnie Bradford knocked it loose, number 23. A heck of a play by Bradford. Looks like uh, Chris, uh, Anthony Carter was going to make this catch. And maybe Bradford was there just an instant too soon. But that uh, was uh, in super slow motion. So uh, to the naked eye, the timing was perfect. Now Rave has to put the Vikings on top for the first time. 35 yards away. Harry Newsom will hold. That's perfect. And the Minnesota Vikings have scored 20 unanswered points. Reves knocks it home from 35, and with 9.17 to go in the ballgame, the Vikings lead Denver by a trio. Oh, Mr. Energizer Bunny, out for a stroll. <laughs> Desolidificator will put an end to your precious little source of power. Your hippity hoppity days are over. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer battery. It keeps going and going. Do you dream in color? In bottomless blues and screaming yellows? In sounds that shake you to the bottom of your heart. In images clear as crystal and brilliant as ice. In faraway worlds as close as your fingertips. These are what dreams and Sony Trinitron televisions are made of. Make one come true for you. It's your life. Isn't it worth a Sony? How do you remember an important phone number? Mr. Stick It Pat. Put it on the door, on the clock. The first three letter uh, numbers are in the area code up here. and then You just write the number backwards on your forehead. When you look in the mirror, it'll come out. Then I just go like that. Here's a really important number to remember. 1-800-OPERATOR. Only from AT&T. There's no lower price for a collect call. Just spell it out. 1-800-O-P-E-R-A-T-O-R. -E and remember this. If it's not 1-800-OPERATOR, it's not AT&T. I would say it. 1-800-OPERATOR. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Budweiser. Beachwood Age for a crisp, clean, classic taste. AT&T, we help put your world within reach. Energizer brand batteries, nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going and going. And by Burger King and its everyday value menu. Have it your way. I love this place. 9-17 remaining in the ballgame. The Vikings outscored 6-3 in the first quarter, fell behind 20-3. It was 20-17 at the halftime, and two field goals from Reveas have put Minnesota on top here in the fourth quarter. And Denver hasn't scored in almost 28 minutes. Derek Russell and Milburn of the deep men. Chases Milburn way back into the end zone and come out to the 20 yard line. Well, the key play on the last drive was a third down catch made by Chris Carter. They had only completed uh, three out of 10 on third down conversions, but this was a big one that resulted in the three point uh, field goal by Reves. But Chris Carter continues to make big plays. Remember, he was shaken up earlier in the uh, first half, after uh, in the second half, rather, when that big hit from Dennis Smith. Pressure clutch kick though by Revez 
made it easily. Out of the shotgun now. Here come the Broncos on first and ten. Screen pass. Caught by Bernstein. Walker's in front. He hurdles and moves it out to the 31-yard line before Fred Strickland makes the tackle. That's a gain of 11. Now, Bernstein's going to have a lot of fun talking to Vincey Glenn because uh, earlier in the game, he lowered his shoulder and hurt Vincey, hurt his shoulder. And this time when the two meet, uh, Vincey goes real low and Bernstein goes over the top. Really a talented athlete, Rod Bernstein. 6'3", 245. Has that type of ability for a big man. And a first down after the uh, catch by Bernstein, first and ten. Left side, Vance Johnson, Audrey McMillan up to make the stop at the 35 yard line, and the clock shows 8:22 remaining. Well, how often has he done it? 31 times in the fourth quarter. And today he'll be challenged uh, by the third best defense in the NFL in a real classic uh, defense that rushes just four men primarily and drops off seven in an umbrella type of zone defense. Second down and six. Blitz. Elway. Man open across the middle and the catch is made by Shannon Sharp for a first down at the 48 yard line. It seems like every time the Vikings blitz Elway burns them. They cannot afford to uh, blitz John Elway. He just sees the field too well. He sees the blitz coming and knows exactly where he wants to go to Sharp. And it's a first down for the Orange team. Yeah. Gain of 13 in the last play. Elway has thrown for 263 yards now. Vikings haven't given up 300 yards passing since 1991. Here's the sweep to the right side. Bernstein cuts it up, gets a block. Moves the 245, and Vincey Glenn makes the tackle. Viking player down at the 48-yard line. It's Fred Strickland. A 24-yard gain by Bernstein. And it was because of a key block on the kickout by Robert Del Pino, number 39. And then we uh, are going to get an example of a Viking player being tired. Watch Culpepper, 77, not strong enough to bring down Rod Bernstein and perhaps a little bit tired. That's the one of the many effects of playing here in Mile High Stadium. Fred Strickland, who has been very active today, and he will walk off without assistance. A 24-yard gain by Bernstein. That's his long for the year, and it gives him 37 yards on nine carries now. And the Broncos are starting to run the ball a little bit more on this drive. 7.05 remaining in the ball game. Ball at the 28, first down and 10. Draw play. Del Pino goes right. Had a block from Russell Freeman over there. And Todd Scott makes the tackle, number 38. A lot of time left, but already the Broncos are well within Jason Elam's range. He talked about that 54 yarder he got against San Diego. That, of course, is his career long, but he's 8 for 8 inside of 30 yards. Reggie Rivers comes into the backfield, replacing Del Pino now on second down. Or rather, Bernstein. Del Pino is in the lineup. Here's Elway. Flushed. Goes right. Fires deep toward the end zone. Knocked away at the goal line. Carl Lee. Number 39 makes the defensive play. This classic battle between Zimmerman and Dolman. Zimmerman's going to win this one just in the nick of time. He brings Dolman down. And it's an outstanding play on the outside by Carl Lee, cutting inside of Vance Johnson, who's uh, begging for a flag, not going to get one. Bernstein back in now with Del Pino on third down and seven. Elway comes left. Got him. 
John Randall. And what that does is that makes uh, Jason Lee Elam go back to his limit. That will bring up a field goal of about 54 yards. It won't bring up the field goal. They're bringing Tom Ruin on. Interesting. Fourth sack of the game for Minnesota. And it's John Randall picking up his sixth and a half. And now Elam comes back out on the field. Ruin went out, then came back, and Elam is in there. Now they're going to have to burn a timeout now. They don't have a holder out there, Vern. Tommy Maddox didn't even have his helmet. But it's the Vikings who call timeout. Second timeout. Told you weird things happen here in Mile High Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Maddox is the holder. I think he was faked out by the change of mind by Wade Phillips. His helmet was on the, si on the bench. And uh, he was nowhere near being ready to come out for this field goal. Well, the ghosts of Mile High rise and circulate. Looks like it's going to be from about 53, Vern. CBS Sports coverage of the NFL continues next Sunday with regional action. You'll see either Chicago at Kansas City, Detroit at Green Bay, or the New York Giants at Philadelphia. It all starts at 1230 Eastern with the NFL Today. All you need to know. Jason Elam is on the field, so is Tommy Maddox. And Wydell will center it. Keep in mind that Tim Irwin has blocked two today. 52 yards to tie the ball game. That's got enough. It's good! Officially call it a 53-yarder. One shy of his season long. And you wonder about the uh, change of heart. They sent out the punting team at first, then sent out the field goal team, and then get three. What's that ball doing there? <laughs> Working to be the best they can be. <laughs> Teammates sponsored by the U.S. Army. The Detroit Lions, led by quarterback Rodney Pete, number nine. And wide receiver Herman Moore, number 84, have by leaps and bounds been the surprise team of the entire NFL season. The towering talents of both of these young stars have made the 93 Lions the best they can be. Classic cars. 63 Vet. Split window. Right. 68 Camaro Supersport. GTO, any year. Nice. Gran Torino. Starsky and Hutch. Good car. 65 Mustang Raptor. It's obvious. 75 Pacer. <laughs> <laughs> Tail fins. Bumper bullets. Bench seats. Drive. Drive Boss 302. 427 Big Block LED8 with an 850 double pump. Beachwood aged Budweiser. Crisp, clean, classic. 548 remaining in regulation play. Jason Elam's 53-yard field goal has notched it at 23-all. Elam will kick off. Kadri Ismail waits for it at the goal line for the Minnesota Vikings. Adam takes a funny hop. It looked like a nine iron, and Ismail is in trouble. Elijah Alexander, number 58. You know, Elam didn't try to kick a knuckleball there. He's just trying to kick the ball as far as he possibly can. That ball came out, was almost spiraling, and when it came down and hit the ground, it almost augured into the ground. <laughs> Watch this bounce away from uh, Ismail. 
And now he's got absolutely no chance. Timing is off. The wedge is broken down. And now he pins his uh, offense deep in their own end. Ismail shaken up, gets up. Brian Billick, the offensive coordinator for Dennis Green, sends the Minnesota Viking offense on the field. They have not played well in the fourth quarter this year. They've given up 30 points in each of the last two ball games. Up the middle it goes to Roger Craig. And Shane Dronette makes the tackle. And in each of those last two games, they held the lead in the fourth quarter and lost both games. Had a big lead at one time at home to Detroit. Last week led 17-16 to San Diego going into the fourth. And they led 23-20 until a few moments ago. 5-14 to go. And counting. Charlie Waters, the defensive coordinator of the Denver Broncos. Second and seven. Play action. Salisbury. Carter is all by himself. There was an obvious mix-up. And here goes Chris Carter across the 50. Down to the 40 and finally tackled at the 30-yard line. 55-yard gain, blown coverage by the Broncos. Great fake by Salisbury, but an unbelievable effort by Chris Carter. A lot of guys would have just caught the ball, cruised down the sideline, and then stepped out of bounds. Here he is right here. Watch the good fake in the backfield, and then Carter comes down on the corner route, and he's going to be wide open. Perfect execution, but what makes big plays is great athletic ability. Watch the cut to back to the middle of the field by Chris Carter. 55-yard gain. Here's Craig coming right. And he's down at the 26. 4-10 remaining in regulation play. This is really where the Vikings have to run the ball. They have to run it to take time off the clock. They're already within Revez's field goal range. But if they can't take time off the clock running it, they're going to just play right back into the hands of the Broncos and the hand of John Elway. Second down and six. Word is carried 11 times for 30 yards. Craig 10 for 31. Robert Smith is inactive with an illness. Second down. 338 remaining in regulation play. Craig, nothing. Dave Wyman makes the tackle. That'll bring up another third down situation. For those of you expecting to see 60 minutes, you're watching the NFL on CBS in the game between the Minnesota Vikings and the Denver Broncos. I'm Vern Lundquist along with Dan Fouts, and our score is 23-23. 60 minutes will be seen in its entirety immediately following this game, except on the West Coast and Mountain time zones. Salisbury, deep right side, incomplete pass, threw it away. It'll be fourth down. And the Minnesota Vikings are going to try and climb back on top. Dennis Green's team fell behind 20-3 early in the second quarter as John Elway threw for two touchdowns. But Salisbury led them back. It was 20-17, Denver at the half. Then we were tied for 20 at 20-20. The Vikings went on top by three. We're now tied again. And here's Fawad Reyes to try and put the Vikings back on top. He's done it. 43-yard field goal. And it comes with two minutes and 49 seconds remaining in the game. And it's been a while since we talked about all the field goal kickers and making headlines. Well, we're going to have headlines today. Revez with two here in the second half. Elon put the Broncos uh, back into a tie, and then Revez with a real pressure kick hits from 43. Earlier this season, Fouad Revez had five in a game against Green Bay. And that one breaks the tie and puts Minnesota back on top. 2.49 remaining. And in a very uncomfortable position because there's 2.49 remaining and John Elway will have three timeouts to work with. And playing at home. And he's done it 31 times. He's got them right where he wants them. Dallas still leads, but not by much. What an upset that would be, huh? Wow.
Reveas will kick it. Milburn and Russell are deep for the return. This will be Glenn Milburn at the one. To the 26. The tackle made by Dave Garnett. Elway and company come back on the field. Remember, it's only a three-point difference here, so Elway's not thinking necessarily having to go uh, 74 yards for the winning touchdown. Elam just hit from 53, so that gives Elway a little bit more room to work with. And the Broncos do have all three timeouts left. Screen pass, left side. Good move by Milburn. He gets it out to the 32-yard line. Well, he got a feel for Carlos Jenkins. He knew it was a screen right away. Got involved with all the linemen. And uh, then Milburn puts on a great move to get away from him. Good call by uh, Jim Fossil. Elway across the middle. That one's caught at the 40-yard line on second down. It'll be a first and 10. And we are nearing the two-minute warning. 120 seconds remaining at Mile High Stadium in Denver. The Minnesota Vikings are up by three, but Elway has the ball. Hey, the Miss Perfect pageant. Yeah. Miss Perfect. We're watching hockey. That's it. Hockey. Let's watch hockey. both. Miller Lite presents the Miss Perfect Face-Off. Okay, Bob, Miss Georgia goes to the corner. She pays the price. Here's the puck coming loose. Nice shot. She scores! Brought to you by Miller Lite. If you can combine great taste and less filling, you can combine anything. Oh, that'll be sashing two minutes for Miss Congeniality. Bad call. Good beer. Great taste, less filling. Can your beer do this? <laughs> Best jet printers from Hewlett Packard. It's easy to make it happen. You build a new razor with precision heads to shave below the skin in comfort. And what do you get? Cut a precision groove to help the Norelco lift and cut system shave even closer. And what do you get? Build a razor that shaves closer, smoother than ever before. And what do you get? The new Norelco Razors, our closest shave ever. Is their 60 Minutes anniversary show really as good as the critics say it is? See for yourself when the best one hour in television becomes the best two hours in television tonight on CBS. Then it's a CBS miniseries, Return to Lonesome Dove, Part 1. And before all that, we may just have OT, Part 1. <laughs> Well, we've got 120 seconds left in this one, and then 120 minutes left of 60 minutes tonight. Can't wait. First and 10, 26-23, Minnesota. L.A. left side. Vance Johnson It's tipped away by Aubrey McMillan, and he draws a flag. And that flag comes from an official who really was not in very good position to make that call. Wow. Yeah, that was made by Paul Betts, the back judge, and Vincey Glenn is irate and ought to be real careful here. He might get a uh, further penalty here. What they're going to call is that uh, McMillan had his left arm on Johnson as he reached across with the right hand to knock it down. Pass interference. Number 26 defense. First down. And watch... Uh, McMillan's left hand here on the back of Johnson. And that little push got the flag, and uh, that's a real questionable pass interference call. Two in the last three games against the Vikings. First down at the 49-yard line. Elway deep right side. Incomplete. Carl Lee was covering. And a flag is thrown in the offensive backfield. We may get a roughing the passer call. Wow. I 
Bennett's going to go against number 92, Roy Barker. Now he's a guy pleading his case a little bit late. Another crucial mistake by Personal Denny Green's foul. defense. Unnecessary roughness. A late hit by number 92. 15 yards. First down. Let's that. take a look at it, Vern. Boy, how late is it? I was wondering where he was. That's a real poor judgment on Barker's place. play there. Probably didn't see that Elway didn't have the ball. And as a result, a first down at the 36. They're already within Elam's range. Elway scrambles, pulls up, drills it to Johnson. He's tackled at the 29. One. 43 remaining. Now, you know one thing. The Vikings are not going to blitz Elway. They're going to rush these four very tired down linemen and just play zone behind it. On second down, Elway looks right, flips it out for Shannon Sharp. It's incomplete. That stops the clock with 123 remaining. And just as I say, they're not going to blitz him, they blitz him. <laughs> Jack El Del Rio came right up the middle, adding five men to the uh, pass rush. And what that does is that means there's only five men to block those five, trying to get some type of advantage along that defensive front. But those guys are really breathing hard down there. It's third down. 123 to go. Three-point lead for the Vikings. Del Pino and Bernstein are with Elway in the backfield. They hand it off. It's Robert Del Pino to the 26-yard line. I don't think that's enough for the first down. We'll see where the spot is. Carlos Jenkins with the tackle. They'll bring out the chain. And the officials have stopped the clock. That may be enough. 108 to go. Now the problem is, is that... Uh, we got one of those uh, chains here in Denver, Vern, that they can add links to at any time. <laughs> or they can take links out. I know it. I've seen it. That's part of the mystique here, huh? That's one of those weird <laughs> deals they got going here. <laughs> this one, they're going to take a few links out. And uh, they didn't really have to. That's a whole football they made it by. First down. He did get it. First and 10 at the 26 with 108 remaining. And the Broncos trailing by three. Now Elway's thinking touchdown. Got the field goal in his back pocket. Now he's thinking six points. Vikings bring four. Elway across the middle. Flag is down in the offensive backfield. A fumble recovered by Minnesota. But keep in mind the presence of the penalty flag at the 35. Now, we'll know shortly if this is holding against the Broncos or not. Milburn is hit by two defenders. Here's Tom Hoyt. Holding number 65. Penalty is declined. Fumble on a play recovered by Minnesota. First down. And if you are a subject of irony, how ironic that Gary Zimmerman is found guilty of the hold. That's his first holding penalty of the year. Here's the hit. Todd Scott and Carlos Jenkins. And it's uh, Jenkins that stripped the ball and Scott that got the recovery. Here's Gary Zimmerman on the left side here working against Dolman all day long. And that's a good call. He did pull him down with the left hand. Kept him out for the entire game and one bad play and Zimmerman will get the goat horns. Jenkins and Scott on the tackle of Milburn and the Vikings who were trailing by 17 early in the second quarter are trying to run out the final 49 seconds. Time has been called. 49 seconds remaining in the ball game. Minnesota leads by three. 
has really uh, given us a new sense of self because we have our own identity. I have a Citibank Visa card, and it does have my photo on it, so I have one less worry. And not only that, but you can pick what you like. So it doesn't look like a DMV photo. I don't know why the other credit cards aren't doing the same thing. We need a photo card so family members can tell us apart. Introducing the first credit card with your photo and signature on front from not just Visa, Citibank Visa. 49 seconds remaining in regulation play. Gary Zimmerman traded by Minnesota to Denver. And the holding call proves costly. Well, but uh, no. they still fumble. You're right. You know, the holding call really had nothing to do with the fact that Carlos Jenkins ripped the ball away from Glenn Milburn. Doesn't make Zimmerman feel any better, though. Second and eight. And here is Roger Craig. Out to the 25. John Elway and the Denver Broncos were up by 20 to 3. Early second quarter. And Sean Salisbury, who has thrown for 366 yards in the ballgame, leads them from behind. Reveas kicks two field goals late in the game, and the final one from 43 gave Minnesota the lead. And how about that big pass catch and run by Chris Carter that set up Reveas for that uh, apparent winning field goal? That was a 55 yarder, and Chris Carter has six catches for 134 yards. I know the answer to this, but do you suppose at some point Buddy Ryan might say, you know, I was wrong about Chris Carter. He really can play. Buddy, say he was wrong? That's kind of like asking the Fonz to say <laughs> wrong. He could never say it either. Right. You do know who the Fonz is, don't you, I Bert? remember him quite well. Yeah, happy days. Yeah, well, for some of us, those days weren't nostalgic. <laughs> <laughs> Real time. 43 seconds to go. The Broncos at home against Pittsburgh next week. Minnesota's on the road at Tampa Bay. And it looks like Sean Salisbury and the Vikings are going to win this one. Here's Roger Craig. Don't forget, as soon as this game is over, a special anniversary edition of 60 Minutes. It'll last 120 minutes. And now the final timeout. Or Denver uses a timeout. And that is their last one. Minnesota really showed some character today, Vern. Down as they were, and it looked like they were down for good. Yes. Great comeback. They will uh, win here after losing here the last time they were here, 42-21. Vancey Glenn. And the Vikings will go to 5-4. and four. We assume it is fourth down and uh, Minnesota is going to give it up. You know what the Vikings ought to do here is they ought to snap the ball to uh, Newsom and then have Newsom just run out of the back of the end zone. Now the clock has started and they can just run the game out if that's the way the timeout is. Well there's some confusion as to whether or not Denver actually did use its final timeout. Timeout, Denver. Now there's no confusion. And last charge, timeout. And they got the 33 seconds put back on the clock, too. But if uh, Newsom just runs around there, that would be a two-point safety. Tom White explaining this, uh, or attempting to explain this to Wade Phillips. Today's game was produced by Michael Burks and directed by Andy J. Kindle. The coordinating producer of the NFL today is Eric Mann. Directed by Larry Cavallina. The senior producer of the NFL on CBS is Ed Gorin. And the executive in charge of production is Rick Gentile. Well, the Broncos don't do this often at home. Lose a 17-point lead. And for Minnesota, down 20 to 3. They're about to kick it away. Give it up to the Denver Broncos, but the Broncos will not have any time timeouts left. Now Dennis Green is getting some kind of Well, see, Denny Green counted four timeouts 
And uh, see, he doesn't play here that often. He doesn't know that that's one of those weird things that happens where the home team gets four timeouts. It Ghosties come out, snowballs come out. Harry Newsom has not had a punt blocked in his last 110. He's not going to go for style points on this one either. Just catch it and kick it. As quickly as possible. High snap. He gets rid of it. And Glenn Milburn has it at the 30. And will hurry out of bounds. There's a flag down back at the point of the punt. Yep, they rough the punter. And how fitting for this game to come to an end with another penalty, huh? 13 for the Vikings. This will be 11 on Denver. And yet another conversation preceding the marking off of the penalty. Well, Salisbury 366 yards. Elway with 290 on 30 of 42. The, the thing about it, the Viking offense now, though, is they're throwing the ball down the field. Chris Carter with six catches, Anthony with four, and Steve Jordan had six. Illegal formation. Remember that 53-yarder he had. On a kicking team. Running into the kicker on the defense. The penalty's offset. We'll replay fourth down. So still only 13 penalties for Minnesota and still only 10 for the Denver Broncos. But eight seconds came off the clock. There right. were 33 seconds before that play, and now there's just 25. So whereas it, it was offsetting penalties, it really hurts Denver more than Minnesota. Newsom back again. Ten-man front for the Broncos. Here they come. And Newsom sends it high and deep. Milburn bobbles the ball. Vikings recover. Carlos Jenkins has it. You can't advance a muff. Minnesota takes over on the muff recovery. And a rough day for Glenn Milburn as he, as you said, muffed that one and fumbled the uh, previous time the Broncos had the ball. But he is a rookie, and rookies are prone to make those type of mistakes. For Wade Phillips, his team will fall to five and four. And a mini winning streak of two games comes to an end. A mini losing streak for Sean Salisbury. And the Vikings comes to an end. They go to five and four. Vikings seem to be one of those rare teams that plays better on the road than they do at home. Dennis Green. And the Minnesota Vikings come to mile high and do what is extremely difficult win here as a visiting team 26 23 the final Minnesota five and four Denver five and four Vikings still trail Detroit question if your cold pill's so good how come your symptoms keep coming back because your pill doesn't work 24 hours introducing Epidac 24 the first cold tablet so effective just one works 24 hours look Sudafed drops off after six hours Tavis D after 12 so your symptoms keep coming back but just one Epidac gives consistent relief for 24 hours so your symptoms don't come back new 24 hour Epidac keeps cold symptoms from coming back maybe you think buying a computer for your family is easy so, which one is right for me? How should I know? Here, read these. I wonder where we could find some help. Hey, can we get hey, some help? Hey. hey! Not so easy unless you come to Radio Shack. From affordable family computers to exciting multimedia PCs, Radio Shack has the selection you want plus the personal service and support you deserve. Make your decision easy with our full line of computers at Radio Shack, your Christmas electronics store. So for Dan Fouts, I'm Vern Lundquist saying so long from Denver where the final score, Minnesota 26 and Denver 23. The NFL on CBS continues next Sunday with regional action. You'll see either Chicago at Kansas City, Detroit at Green Bay, or the New York Giants at Philadelphia. It all starts at 12.30 Eastern with the NFL Today. Our final 26-23 Minnesota. You've been watching CBS sports coverage of the National Football League.
They come from China, from Thailand, from England, Germany, France, and Australia. Every day, people from 33 countries across five continents come together in the friendly skies. United. Come fly the airline that's uniting the world. Come fly the friendly skies. of the PGA's best. Go for the kill in the Franklin Buns Shark Shootout next weekend on CBS. This is CBS. Coming up next in the news on Colorado's 7 Super Sunday, the Broncos battle the weather and the Vikings in a hard-fought Mile High matchup. We'll go live to Mile High, including the locker room for our special post-game coverage. Also, we'll go off the field for an exclusive visit with the Broncos' John Elway. That's what gets me through it, is I know eventually it will end. Winter returns with a vengeance. We'll tell you what tomorrow will bring. And a special report you won't want to miss, a health threat you can't see, smell, or taste, but it takes the most lies from November through February. Hello, everyone. I'm Ernie Bjorkman. And I'm Bertha Lynn. A special edition of Colorado 7 News is next. Everybody wants to get into a membership warehouse to get great savings on groceries, electronics, auto, and business supplies. But getting inside without qualifying or paying for a membership was impossible. Until now. Now there's the free Pace Individual Membership Card. Get in and save. So we had this idea. Why not open a place where people could walk in and a couple of minutes later get an honest-to-goodness meal? It's a place called Boston Chicken, a place where the kitchen's built around ovens instead of microwaves and fryers, where the chicken's never frozen and the mashed potatoes are made from scratch. Of course, this isn't a radically new idea, although a lot of people seem to think it is. Introducing Boston Chicken, the freshest thing going. Take out a freshly prepared individual meal starting at just $3.99. We labored to make the new Dodge Ram the standard for quietness in a pickup. We triple sealed the doors. We coated the hinges with friction reducing material. And to help eliminate wind noise, we even came up with a special sound deadening antenna cover. As pleasant and comfortable as our new truck is, we just couldn't allow it to.